Get on up in this piece, man. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. What's happening, everybody? Peace, peace. We'll give a few minutes and let people get up in here, man. You know, I had to go live. A lot of things being said. Let me just clear a few things up. A lot of things being said. You know, I had to go live. Let me clear a few things up. Thank you, Lars. I appreciate you, family, for that 10. We let the people get up in here, man, and we're going to release our measure. Man, we holding up all right. We still still having a hard time getting him back, though. I'm going to explain everything to you guys. I'm going to explain everything to you. Yeah. There's a lot going on, and, and you know, I owe the people an explanation of some of the situation that we're dealing with. Freeze and I and his family brother and sister, twin brother and sister, Camille and Kyle. Yeah, they were quiet during his life because he knew they knew that he would have his head. They had. But that's all right. We're going to get to it, man. Yeah, we're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. Don't worry about it. We're going to get I'm going to handle it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Hey, nephew, I'm going live right now. Yeah, no, I'm not. This is not the class. Class ain't until 7. I'm going live with Facebook and, and YouTube right now because I wanted to clear up some shit about what they're talking about, Philip. you know? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's on YouTube right now and it's on Facebook right now. We're we already live. Okay. All right, one. Yeah, no, they didn't do the autopsy yet. They don't want the autopsy performed in a foreign country, you know, skeptical about, you know, I know some people might not think it to be skeptical, but they skeptical. Who knows if they try to take his organs or whatever. And we thought the best thing to do is to make sure he come home where you can, you know, gauge and watch over everything. We don't want him to have no autopsy in no foreign country. Are you serious? If they do something, what can we do? You feel me? Yeah. Ain't no question. So let me get into it, man. Um, you know, I, I don't want you guys to be so dis you know, distracted by, you know, people out there with rumors and saying all these things. Those people don't know. And, you know, we we live in an age of social media where people get, you know, they get, um, you know, they're able to get money for provocative things. And certain people do things uh, provocatively on purpose. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it's a revenue stream. This is we in a different age. This is a social media age. And people will say things out there on purpose to get you to come to their page, you know, uh, if you don't know no better. That's just the way that's the world we live in today, man. People are very unforgiving, especially black people against other black people. You know, let me just say that people are people are extremely unforgiving uh, about somebody black, but somebody white. All the shit that was done to us, you know, we we have white women, we have white best friends, you know, we work for white folks or what have you. Black folks are extremely uh, forgiving to white people, even though the worst atrocities known to mankind were done and we were the recipients of that treatment. You know, I know there's something about, you know, fill up with the young girl, 14, 15 years old or whatever. He didn't know. But uh you know, if we if we and I'm not trying to, um, you know, I'm just I just want to give you some clarity. Right. So, um, you know, uh, how long are we supposed to, you know, uh, hold something against somebody if you not hold? Thank you for that hundred family uh, in post travel adventures. Thank you for that hundred. How long are you supposed to hold it? You know what I'm saying? Because everybody from the streets, you know, 
we're done for. You know, if if there's a certain if what, what group, you know, what group are you supposed to hold these things against? You know what I'm saying? The streets, gang members, pimps, dope boys. Who? You know, who don't got a chance no more? You know, because we come from these streets, man. Do you understand? And I'm going to give you a perfect illustration. I want you to bring your whole mind. I always say I have this preacher friend that always used to say, bring your whole mind. And um, and I like it to this day. I use it, but I always make sure I give him his credit. So I want you to understand. And I've said this in one of my classes, but I'm going to share a few things with you today. I have a class at seven, but we got some time and I wanted to spend a little time with you today because we need it with, with everything that's going on. Um, I said in my class yesterday, my YouTube class, I explained that, that when we were brought to this country, that we were robbed of our culture, we were robbed of our language, uh, our essence, who we were, how we thought, how we gauged things, how we responded, how we reacted. You were robbed of all that, right? So if something was taken from you, then you used to think a different way, right? If they had to take something from you, then that means before they took it from you, you used to think a different way. So now I always said that probably the first 15 years in this country, probably a lot of enslaved people are people. There was a lot of death that happened because they would not accept the fact that they were said slave, that they were less than. You know what I'm saying? That they were subhuman. And so I'm sure there was a lot of death. We know there was a lot of death during the transatlantic slave trade where a lot of our people that had their right mind just jumped off the ship. And it's rumored that millions did that. Right. So in our right mind, we felt it was better to die than to be brought to a country uh, to be treated any kind of way. Do you understand? But that was in our right mind. So I'm saying for the first probably 15 years from 1619, and we're not talking about some black people that were here already. We're specifically talking about the slave trade, people that were brought over here, right? The tribe of Judah, us. So probably for the first 15 years, you know, uh, there was a lot of death because there was a lot of people who would not accept the fact that or accept to be treated the way they were treated, right? But... How about after the first 25 years when now you have seeds, children born into this country, born into a country that has legalized your treatment, right? Born into a country that when you were born, you were told if you run away from this condition that you're in, that you're a criminal. Right. So there was a socialization and an indoctrination that was transpiring that had transpired to the point that that individual growing up really felt like if they ran, they really felt that they were criminals. You know, because that was the indoctrination and that's all they knew. They didn't have any access to the first way they thought when they first came here, when we first came here. They only had access to the indoctrination and the socialization of the country that we were in at the time that had told us that we were subhuman, that had explained to us, you are in this condition, right? And if you run from this condition, you are indeed a criminal. So there were actually people, our people, that really felt that they were criminals. Even though chattel slavery is the worst thing that mankind has ever known. Do you understand? But that's the conditioning, right? So, for all these years that we've been in this country, we have been conditioned and you think the way you think right now, you think that's normal. And because you think the way you think, operate, respond to things right and wrong, right? Because you think that that's normal, you never develop a defense against it. You never have a reason to fight against because you think that it's normal. So yeah, all of you looking right now you are in this country and have been conditioned and socialized according to this country. What they think, what they feel, what they think is right, what they think is wrong. And you feel that that is the normal way that you're supposed to think. But I'm here to tell you 
that that is the abnormal way for you to think because that's not your first mind. You have only been operating in your second mind, not your first mind. Because remember, I said when we were brought here, there were things that were taken from us, stripped from us. And even back then, it was a law. If you were caught reading, they would kill you. Why? Because they didn't want you to develop a mind, right? They wanted you to have the mind that they were taught they taught you to have. That's why after all these years of this conditioning, right, you feel a certain kind of way when white people say something to you. You have a reaction, right? If they say something derogatory to you, you have a real strong reaction to them, right? Because what they taught you was that you were less than. I don't have a reaction to that only because I'm operating in my right mind. Right. And we can go into how that happened because I share those things in my class. Right. So thank you for that. O'Shea, thank you, family. Yeah, I want to get with you, too, man. Yeah, I want to get with you, family. And we're going to uh, holler at because I know that sin really loved you and I love what he loved. So we're going to get together, man. Uh, leave your uh, your information so I can get at you. And I know Freeze can get at you, too. So we're going to get together. We'll do something. So thank you, Jay, for that. Tim. So now listen. So. All these years, right, you have developed, we have developed into wherever we are right now. But that mind that we have is not a mind that was supposed to benefit us. This is why it's so easy for us to kill each other, because that socialized mind, right, that mind that they gave us, they never liked us anyway, right? We were taught that they were less, less than. That's why it's easy for you to look at somebody like you because you're looking at them with a mind that this culture taught you to have. And with that mind, that mind sees you as worthless. So when you look at your brother, that's what you see because you operating with this mind that you've been conditioned and socialized in for all these years that you've been here. And you've never, you've never developed a resistant because you're not going to resist anything that you think is normal. It's normal, right? But I'm telling you that it's not normal. When I look at the black man, right, or the black woman, I see with my original mind how beautiful we are, how strong we are, how empowering we are, how much influence we have. Right. Somebody says, man, but Dre, um, what about uh, uh, you, you, you used to be a pimp. What about that? You used to be a pimp. Right. Or somebody over here. He was he was a gang member. He had killed people, killed his own people. And and over here, dude was a um, a drug dealer and he sold drugs to his own community. All right. OK. I'm going to tell you. Right. But let me put it in perspective for you. Right. We're talking about clarity today. Bring your whole mind, right? Let me put it into perspective for you. So I believe that I am, King David, thank you for that 20, that I am the original true blood descendants of Abraham, a true Hebrew, an Israelite. Now, I might not operate like a lot of them Israelite brothers out there operate, but we both are in agreement that we are the true blood descendants because prophecy have said that, right? Uh, in Genesis 15, it talks to Abraham and God is telling him what's going to happen to your descendants. This is a whole nother, because I don't want to get in the back and forth because when people try to get in the back and forth to me about my beliefs, I always say to them, let me just cut through the chase. I serve the most high. I serve the God that answers by fire, right? And my proof that my information is thorough, that God is with me, is the receipts that I have, all right? You know where I come from. You know, my mom was a hoe. My dad was a pimp. Yet I use the information that the Most High gave me since I was 16 and been teaching me since I was 16. He would give me this information and I use it over a period of time. I used it in the pimp game and I became the biggest guy at the time that I was doing it, right? I used it to defeat white supremacy, what do, you, what do you mean, feet white supremacy? Well, to lead Washington state and not only Washington state, but this whole country 
and police accountability have actually changed laws, right? And that was all televised. So everything that I'm talking about, you can go see. So when I have conversations with guys, I ask them to bring your receipts to the table because this is a day that we're in. I'm not, I'm not into a pretty talking because there's a lot of us that we talk pretty, right? We're very great orators. There's a lot of people out there that's talking great. But I'm telling you, I have the receipts to back up my conversation, right? Because I use my information, right, to defeat law enforcement, right? To submit a whole state underneath me where the governor was asking for my counsel, where the mayor was asking for my counsel, where they made me the first official street czar in the nation, right? Where the president called me, where I was on news medias, where, 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 um, uh, 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 the, the number one magazine in the world, The New Yorker, came and interviewed me, and on and on and on and on. I have the receipts. And so when I talk in my classrooms, I tell them I'm giving you the things that I did to develop the receipts that I have, even though no one ever gave me a chance. This man comes from a pimp and a prostitute. His mom was a hoe. What the hell can he do? He's not going to do anything. But they were badly mistaken because they'd never seen a black man before. Somebody, so I don't lost somebody right now because they saying well, they see black people all the time. Yeah, they see the black people that they're taught. They see black people that have been socialized. They've been indoctrinated, right? They ain't never seen a black man with a free mind. Well, not in our generation, they haven't, right? So the black man with his original mind, there's nothing that white supremacy can do to offset the power of a free mind. You see what it did for me. You see how the most I educated me and allowed me to go against their system that have never been defeated, that have been defeating us since we've been here. They beat the Black Panthers. They beat the Muslims, beat them into subjection. Anytime we ever rose up, they always killed our people and defeated us, put us in jail. They, their system have humbled us uh, miserably over and over again. And when I started my movement, when they killed my little brother, the, I hated that they killed my little brother. He was the apple of my eye. But the Most High allowed it to happen because the Most High knew if I allow them to touch his brother, Andre will go up against the world about his, his little brother. He knew that I was going to get these people to business. I didn't care what I was up against. He might have looked like Goliath to you guys, but he didn't look like Goliath to me because the Most High was on my side. Right. And I know a lot of my people up here never they really couldn't understand in Seattle. So they were kind of against me because I was doing things that their socialized mind didn't believe that I should be doing. Their socialized mind only believe white people are supposed to think that way about themselves. White people are supposed to have that type of confidence. Only white people because they were conditioned over 400 years to believe exactly the way they're believing. Right. So they were against me because it was something that they were uncomfortable about. And I understood that. Right. So I was knowing that, listen, when they start seeing the evidence, then they'll come along and surely they came along. But in the beginning, there was great apprehension against me. Right. So what I'm trying to explain to you is that true enough, I was this pimp. Right. But if the most high knew what our condition was going to be, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to turn a corner here. Right. He knew because he said when your ancestors, they're going to be taken into a foreign country and they're going to be enslaved there and treated horribly there. So the most high knew the condition that us as black people would be in. Right. Right. So now watch this. Did the most high say. Did he say according to what this country has taught you to believe according to their right and wrong. Because this, I, I just, this, listen, bring your whole mind. This country has taught us their right and wrong, right? So if you see me, you automatically see me as this man was a pimp, he was wrong. That man's a drug dealer, he was wrong. That man was a gang member, he was wrong. He was killing people. Whatever vice that our people have been in, that we are wrong, we are evil, we are all that. That's how the system teaches you to think with that indoctrinated mind. But the Most High, who had prophesied, who had told the father of the faith, Abraham, the condition of the people, your descendants, 
will be taken to a foreign country that's not your their own and be enslaved there and be treated harshly there. When the Most High looked at Andre, the Most High didn't see according to what this country sees in me. He knew the condition could be anything because he already said they would be taken and they would be enslaved there and treated horribly there. He already said that. So whatever the conditions were be, whatever the conditions were going to be that were going to manifest after this treatment, do you think that he was shocked about what that condition could possibly be? But whatever that condition was, he wasn't saying that I'm going to come save only him. I'm going to come deliver this one over here because, oh, he got a degree or he's a good boy. And I'm on. No, no. He looked at his his people. He looked at the descendants that were be there. And he says, I'm going to come rescue my people. I'm going to come empower my people. That's why he came to me when their minds, their indoctrination, their thought process could only see me as a pimp. But the but the most high saw me as his own. Do you understand what I'm saying? The most high looked way ahead of time and saw me in whatever the condition being in this country that is not my own made me be in. He saw me as his own. But the country taught you and me to only look at us as if we actually had a fair shake, right? They're looking at you, they're looking at us, and they're saying as if, you know, well, uh, we used people for over 260 years of free labor, and we killed them, and, and you know, we raped them, men and women and children. Uh, we spared their children to alligators. Uh, you know, we hung them at will, we did, and, and, and they should be exactly where we are. You know what I'm saying? They should be exactly where we are. They should be operating with the privilege and the benefits that we have had. We, they should be being where we are. Forget about what they come through. Forget about the results of what they come through. Forget about the trauma of what they go through. Forget about any of that. They should be just like we are. We're judging them according to who we are. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I told the story about my partner, Johnny who had done 24 years, right? And and he had got out and we was having a conversation one day and he said to me, oh man, I, um, I'm, I ain't nothing but an old convict. And I said, don't say that around me ever again. He said, what, Dre? I said, don't say that ever again, right? I said, because you're thinking with a socialized mind that you've been indoctrinated and that you now have you if it accept it that you are the bad guy right forget about what may have caused you to be in the conditioning that you are in you are only a bad guy according to how you've been taught to think do you understand i said but you're actually a political prisoner of war in a country that have done so much and the results of that so much, right, is what we see today. Somebody says, well, man, people got to be responsible. Uh, and, 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 and uh, of course, they got to be responsible. But when you say that, do you think the people that created the environment for your people to be in have any responsibility? Or is it just the results have the responsibility? Not the beginning. Not the architects of it, right? So the architects of it can can put something together and say, this and this is going to happen, right? So when that and that happens, you only could see the result and then you blame the results because you have that indoctrinated mind. This is why God called me from the condition that he called me in, right? Because first of all, he wanted me to know, right, how he viewed me, how he looked at me so that I would be a, uh, that I would be empowered to how he thought about me and not about how they thought about me. Right. So why? Because you can't harness any power if you always thinking you the bad guy. This is what I told my partner, Johnny. As long as you keep thinking that you're the bad guy without bringing it into the situation all the things that have transpired. But you can't bring that in because you have a mind 
that have made you accept that running away from slavery, you're a criminal. That's the kind of mind you got, right? So when I look at you, when I look at us, I look at us with the eyes that the Most High gave me to look at us. I know why we're here. I know the condition that we're in. I can look at us in the worst case situ situation and I would be like, well, what do you expect? What do you expect? You would expect everything that you are seeing in our communities and our families and our relationships, everything you would expect that to happen to any people that have faced the treatment, the horrible evil that we have faced here in this country. Any people that have gone through what we have personally gone through. And see, we are not able to maneuver like, quote unquote, Jewish people have been able to in this country. Why? Because they share the same skin color as white people. So they were able to intermingle with them, change their names. Right. They were able to intermingle, have babies, change their names. Right. Because they got the same. And now you can see a Jewish dude and he might be blonde and blue hair. Right. Blonde eyes, uh, 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 blue eyes and blonde hair. You know what I'm saying? So it's brilliant of them to be able to have done that, to, uh, to, 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 to maneuver the, in that capacity. But I want you to know, because I don't want you to be looking at anybody else and look thinking about, man, what's wrong with us? Well, they maintained their culture. That's what's wrong with us. We didn't maintain our culture because remember, in the beginning, your original mind, the way you thought, the way you responded, what was valuable to you. What was precious to you, your language, your culture, everything about you was taken from you. So all these other races look at what's wrong with black people. Well, that's what's wrong with black people. You was able to come to this country intact. Thank you, Balance, for that hundred. You were able to come to this country intact. You had your culture. You had what makes you feel good, what empowers you in your culture. You was able to bring that. You wasn't required for yours to be taken and stripped, your mind to be taken from you, your identity to be taken from you. That wasn't required. But when we got here, it was a necessity that they take everything from us so that they can mold us just into the little slaves that we had become. Mold us into those little itty bitty minds that think that they are gods and to think when we are around them, we feel insecure, or insignificant. They molded us into that. How beautiful was the mold as far as they were concerned molded your thinking and he said all these years and it's so beautiful how it has worked because now the condition has been cemented because they now think that it's normal but here come dre and all the black people man that guy's a pimp when i first came up here to fight for my brother he ain't nothing he's just old pimp <laughs> you feel what i'm saying he he, he trafficked girls you know this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about with um with Philip. You know, he met that little girl and he didn't know. It happens often. It happens a lot where today the girls look very young. And, and people say, well, that's an excuse. Well, it happened to me. When I was fighting police accountability, you don't think that they would bring that up? But remember, the most high is with me. So what might have been successful for them a million times before me was not going to be successful. Most most people, when the media, because it was the media, right? When I became street czar of Seattle, I'm talking about the media all over this world said they have hired an ex-pimp. And they went in like you never before, like you never knew before. Right. He traffics children. He's done this. He's done this. And guess what happened? I said the most high is with me. Right. Guess what happened? The young lady. The young lady that they said they were talking all this stuff about. She felt like because she'd seen it all happening. She said, man, I, I can't take it, man. I'm not going to let him use me, man. I'm not going to let him use me. To destroy this man. Now, mostly people come out the woodwork and be like, yeah, he did this and did this to me. It didn't happen to me. The young lady came out of the woodwork and began to tell the media, went on the news and told them. Well, wait a minute. 
I ain't got to tell you. I'm going to show you. For prostitution. A Las Vegas Sun article at the time reported on comments that the judge in the case made about Taylor's involvement with a 16 year old girl. U.S. District Judge Howard McKibben said he is deeply troubled by the permanent scarring the girl must deal with since Andre Taylor introduced her to prostitution. McKibben said, said he, he saw, saw great, great fear in the girl's, in the girl's eyes, eyes as, she as she struggled to testify against Taylor at his September trial. That girl is you, correct? That is me, yes. Megan Fishman is now 38 years old, but recalls vividly that time in her life. Before she met Andre Taylor, she was living at a group home in Vegas. A friend of mine um, and myself, we decided we were going to run away from the group home. And we went down to, of course, the Las Vegas Strip. And we were walking, and I crossed paths with him, um, and we, we started talking. Did you kind of know what he was into? No, I just, he, he caught my eye. Um, he was just someone that I was attracted to. Um, and the more that we conversated, that it, we just seemed to, to click. Megan said she lied to Taylor at the time, telling him she was 18. What was the nature of the relationship that you, you had and built with him? Um, he, I looked at up to as like, as a mentor. Um, he was my provider. He, he became my everything. Was this a romantic relationship that you had with him? Um, yeah, it, it was a, yeah. <laughs> All around everything type of relationship, yes. So was he your pimp? Uh, yes. She seems to look back at that time almost fondly, referring to Taylor as a provider. What would you say to people who think, well, that lifestyle, especially for someone underaged, it isn't security and it's not real stability? Uh, I don't know. I guess until you walk in, you know, a mile in, in that in those shoes, you can't really understand what that person's going through. You know, there are a lot of people out there that are forced and that are manipulated and abused and neglected mm -hmm. and put in those type of situations where if their lives are tormented. They are they do have scarring. And my situation was not one of them. I'll be honest. Some people might say that you sound brainwashed. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, though. While Taylor helped arrange our interview with Megan, she says she is the one who wanted to speak up. It's not fair. You know, they're holding something against him that just, it shouldn't be. You know, this was done, it's over with, and, and people need to move forward. Megan says she felt compelled to come forward after recent stories resurrected Andre Taylor's time as a pimp, pointing to his problematic past as a way to question his lucrative job with the city. A sentiment Taylor says stands in contrast to what both the left you see what I'm saying, man? So it does happen. People do lie about their age, right? And you can be innocent about it. You know, somebody looks grown, it looks adult, and you, and you ask them. Most guys in the game, I'm telling you, you're going to ask, how old are you? Well, I'm 18. Oh, okay. They look it and they tell you, right? And I'm just happy that she felt so compelled by this situation, by her knowing that she personally lied to me and that lie got me into some trouble, that she took full accountability and told the people that all that stuff you guys talking about, that's not my situation. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm talking about, right? Because see, black people are so unforgiving, right? Before they probably hated me because they had made up in their mind that I was this guy who was trafficking girls and all this stuff, that I was doing it on purpose. And, you know, it's like Philip. It's like Sinfo. You guys have made up in your mind that anything that he said to you, he lied about it. Right. Like he knew that. this. Do you I don't listen. You guys have been hearing him for a while. Right. And he doesn't appear nor look nor seem like the kind of person that would go. And ask a girl, how old are you? And the girl says, I'm 14 or 15 years old. And he would say, cool. I just wanted to let you guys know that it happens. Right. And with that indoctrinated mind that we have in this country. Right. That has taught us to condemn black people because that's their mind. That's their culture. Condemn, condemn, condemn. Which is why they put us in prison at the rates that they do. White people get off and it's 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 public record. 
but they're going to put us in jail for a little bit of nothing or for the same crime. White boy gets probation. He gets 30 years. You hear it all the time. Stop judging your people. If anybody needs an extension of love and of grace, it is us. That's why I give love and grace. That's why I choose to speak to the community that everyone has looked at as nothing, a forgotten people. And you might think because you got a degree that somehow you've been accepted because, oh, you might got some money that somehow you've been affected. No, you haven't. Because we are seeing people that got money today. Look at Bill Cosby. Look at all these rappers. If you think that they have accepted you, they haven't. So since you should know that they haven't accepted you and that if the littlest things happen, they'll wear your butt out, then you should take into consideration when your brothers and your sisters have been challenged with something and they've come overcome it. Offer, offer love, offer the forgiveness that you would want. Do you understand? Now, it'd be different if people had a record of something. If people done did them three, four, five times, no, nah, man, that's what you are, partner. Yeah, you that, right? Now, you done did this over and over, brother. You ain't got no excuse. That's who you are. Do you understand what I'm saying? But if a person gets into a situation, because sometimes in the game it happens, girls be wanting to have fun, they be fast and all that, and they know to lie. They lie right now to get into clubs. They lie right now to go into the strip clubs and dance. I remember Tracy Lords was one of the most popular white girl, popular um, porn stars. Tracy Lords, look it up. That girl was 16 years old and all them professionals didn't even know. They found out that she was 16. They had to go get every single one of those porn tapes and, and take everything she ever did and take it out of reach of the public. She was 16 and she had fake ID. It happens, brother. Why is it? You probably had it happen in your life where a girl has come and lied to you. Right? Because she want to be with you or she want to have fun. It happens, man. That's all I'm saying is it happens, right? So be careful how you judging people because that same judgment is going to come back on you, right? If you judge people like that, man, if you don't offer grace, if you don't offer mercy, it's because you have that mind that has taught you to hate black. You hate yourself. I could say you hate yourself if you can kill somebody that look like you so easily. I love us. It's damn near impossible for me to hurt somebody. The only way I would hurt somebody that looks like me is if they was coming to try to hurt me or my family. Then it would only be in self-defense. But it would never be nothing premeditated because I'm not looking, nor am I subjected to that socialized, indoctrinated mind. I'm not. And I love you, man. I love all of us. Right? So, listen. I wanted to come on publicly and try to reason with a lot of us because there's so much hate already out there, right? And you think you having fun, right? But remember, you still at the bottom of the totem pole as far as this culture is concerned. As far as the world is concerned, you at the bottom of the totem pole and they continue to laugh at us. Because you know what the Most High said? It doesn't matter if you don't believe in God. I mean, I don't, you know, I'm not with the church and all that. Because most of those preachers are operating, are reading and trying to teach you from an indoctrinated mind. They're not teaching you with their original mind. They're not teaching you with that mind. They're teaching you with an indoctrinated mind, an inferior mind. I don't care how much they hoop and how much that, because I will go on to ask, what have you done? The church have not been powerful. I'm going to beat up on the church. But let me just say, they haven't represented power. They've lost generations because of the lack of power. How are you going to have power with the mind that they taught you to have? How are you going to beat them with the mind that they taught you to have? You can only beat them with an original mind, like I have. And I got all the receipts to prove it, right? I don't care what they say. They wish, they wish that they could say, I didn't do all that. But they can't because it was televised. Right. You know, they say it will not be televised. Oh, no, it was televised. Right. And I beat them. 
and they still today is wondering how the hell I did it, right? They, see, sometimes when something happens, the system tries to recalibrate. It tries to recalibrate. They try to figure out, man, what? How do we stop this? But you can't you can't recalibrate the spirit of God, right? Listen, my life is a reflection of the words that I speak. So not only do I have the receipts, yes, I was a pimp, but I've been married for 24 years, happily. I've been married 24 years, right? And most guys that have longevity have transitioned out of the pimping part of it, not in the game. The pimping part is a small part of the game, right? Like Bishop, like Fillmore Slim, that 87, and Bishop, in his, I believe, in his 80s or late 70s, you know, um, um, Virgil, the Grandmaster, you know, about 78, 79, something like that. They have transitioned out like myself. That's why we have longevity. You understand? Now, we're talking about things that we learned in the game, things that uh, that would reveal to us, experiences that we had in the game that we know can help people. We're reflecting back on what we thought, you know, how we felt, you know, what the game was. And being honest, I remember my dad, he wrote the all-American novel called The Mint Man, my dad, Mel Taylor. And he used to always tell me, you got to be honest with the people. If you start talking about what you've done, what you were involved in, you got to be honest with the people, right? So when I talk to you, I'm honest. Sometimes I take on the characteristics of the character Gorgeous Dre. I know my name is Andre Taylor, but I have to take on that characteristic so that I can deliver to you the essence and the truth of what it was, what I did, how I thought, how I felt, what I learned most of all. So I got to deliver you to you in its essence. You know, once I had passed the law, once we lead the country, you know, and um, uh, and did all that, I start doing music. And people were like, how the hell can he come from, you know, being political to do music? I was doing political. I was doing music before I was political. I've been doing music years ago. Right. And there's a demographic of my people that you can only reach through music. So I said to myself, Lord, I'm on another assignment. There's a people out there, my people, that are trapped inside the hip hop community and they celebrate realness. They, they celebrate a damn, excuse my expression, a down nigga. Oh, he's a down nigga. That nigga real, that nigga from the streets. Well, I'm really that. I'm really that with evidence, with receipts, right? So I felt like if I'm going to get their attention, let me remind them of who I really am. But I got somewhere to lead them. I'm not leading them to do drugs. I've never done drugs in my life. I'm not leading them to a lascivious life, a life of hedonism. I'm reflecting to them my life. Yes, I did all that. I was the best at it. But I transitioned, and as I transitioned, I did greater work when I transitioned. I've been married 24 years. I beat them people at their own game. I'm leading them to somewhere, but I got to get their attention first. So, of course, when I do music, I'm going to be real about it. I'm going to release my full measure because I'm going to be honest. Because one thing for sure, the hip hop culture, they frown upon fake stuff. And ain't nothing fake about me. Do you understand? And so, you know, folks, squares, and they couldn't understand. Even people in my family, they couldn't understand. They was hating. Man, what are you doing? Look, man, I didn't help all y'all. You know, I didn't just help black people with police accountability. I represented every single race. I went to every single community. Is it okay that I go help my people now? I got some people over there that's bound over there. And they need some examples. They need a real true one. And I'm going to get them no matter how you feel about it. Whether you can understand it or not, it was you that never gave me a chance with police accountability. You think I need your permission and your approval? You just sit back in them churches where it's safe at and let me go do this work. I'm dealing with people from the streets, killers, gorillas, and drug dealers. Think they're going to listen to you? Yeah, let me go do this work. They're going to listen to Drado. Yeah, because I'm really that. Yeah, go mind your business with that square stuff. I had to flash a little bit. Yeah, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. There's an end to this. Yeah, I'm about my people, 100%.
you know, on being here. Uh, today, man, all you see is our people like this. Everybody mad and ain't nobody leading. Right? I'm going to say this and you're going to have to forgive me, but I got to say it because my daddy told me you got to be 100 and thorough. What has happened? Everybody's like this because we done produce a bunch of bitch ass niggas. Let me just be 100 about it. That's like this. Normally, now I'm not being upset with women. God made women to be who they are, right? They're emotional, the beauty of their emotions. But he didn't make you to be like that. You're supposed to be a man. So you know women, they're going to talk and they're going to chatter and they're going to gossip, but you done took over their job. All you see now is a bunch of men. Uh, let me let me correct that. A bunch of males doing all this. You don't see no man taking a position with leadership and an example. You see a whole bunch of dudes out there talking a good game in which your socialized conditioned mind you think is heaven. Because your original mind would have said, bruh, you talk a good talk, but you're going to have to bring some receipts in order for me to follow you. Because a lot of people be talking, but their lifestyle don't reflect nothing that they talk about. But minds do. That will show you that I'm thorough because I got a lifestyle that reflects the conversation that I'm giving to you. A lot of people out there behind the screen seem so powerful, seem so polished, but they life, they life is in shambles. You know, I used to tell people, especially when I'm dealing with black people, right? When they want to work with me and partner with me, I used to say, look, man, uh, before we get, before I get into any partnership with you, I got to know what your lifestyle is like, man. You know, you're going to have to represent something in your life, man. Right. You could be, have a raggedy ass life. Right. And I'm not about to partner with you with your life like that. You know, at least my life is, 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 is an example of the words that I speak. Yours might not be right. And the people trust me enough to know that when Dre come, he coming with some authentic. So I'm not about to uh, uh, co-sign somebody whose life is not a reflection of their words. People used to get mad at me because I used to kind of go at Kevin Samuels a little bit. Not because I, I liked Kevin Samuels. Uh, Sinful love Kevin Samuels. And he said some real powerful stuff. But there was just some things that I disagreed with, you know. Because I believe as a man, there's never one time in my life that I will ever, ever release and reduce myself to blame a woman. And I would always say, whenever you do that, whenever you blame a woman, you have ceded power to her. What does that mean? You have given power to her. Right. I used to say when, when I used to uh, uh, and I mentor people and I started recently doing it again. And people would come to me, say, man, Dre, uh, man, if, if she would have did this, that, and the other, I would have did this, this, and this. And I would say, man, don't ever talk to me. Don't say no shit like that to me again. But they, they, what you tripping off of, Dre? Because I would say to them, what you really saying, man, is that in order for you to be a man, you need her to be a woman. That's what you're really saying. Your manhood can't be predicated upon what the broad does or don't do. You're going to be a man regardless of whether she's going to be a woman or not. Stop blaming her. You done empowered her. She more powerful than you. You, She's the excuse that you're not a man. Man, if you don't get your ass up out of here with that small thinking, your socialized ass. I'm going to be a man regardless. She can be what she want to be. That's what my problem was with Kevin. You know what I'm saying? And he said beautiful stuff, but his lifestyle didn't represent what he said. And like I said, bless him. And I pray him and Sinful was up there having a wonderful time. But I just wanted to, uh, I would, because a lot of people were angry with me because they thought I was, you know, hating on him or trying to get, you know, uh, status off of him and stuff. I, status off of him? Nigga, the president of the United States called me. What the hell are you talking about? And the only reason I'm saying that is because people feel that's extremely big. But if you want to talk about big shit, I don't care about you having a million subscribers. Nigga, I changed laws. I beat white folks. The president had to call me. The mayor had to submit. Everybody wanted to come get this game and this information that I'm sharing with you. What is you talking about? Who got the receipts like that? Everybody talking, but who could say it? Nobody, but Dre can. Yeah, but Dre can. 
So again, be forgiven to your people, man. You do that, right? You might not change the world, but you might change your world. That's everybody you come in contact with. And be cognitive of the fact that you're not even in your right mind. You do things because they taught you to do it. The brilliance of white supremacy is that they made you believe that it was normal. That's brilliant. Like I always say, white supremacy didn't happen with violence alone. It happened with brilliance, right? And until you can develop a brilliance that can offset it, they'll continue to rule the world, right? But who would ever think that, oh, God, would pull up old Dre from the gutter? You know what I'm saying? Oh, Dre from the gutter, man. And go up there and get it people to business. Yeah, boy, I was I was devastated when they killed, executed my little brother. And when I came up here, I said, the whole, everybody going to have to pay. And even when I, uh, 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 after the fact, when we was fighting for a uh, 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 wrongful death lawsuit, everybody was like, man, Shay, he did 22 years. He was a criminal. Ain't nobody going to believe this, that, and the other. Huh, we won. We won. We won the wrongful death lawsuit. You see what I'm saying? What, I think we got 1.5 million, you know? And guess what? Because everybody was like, oh, he just in it for the money, all that. Man, I love my brother. Guess what? I didn't touch a dime of that money. You know who got it? His two kids and his mama. And that's how I wanted it to be. I didn't touch a dime of that money. His two kids and his mama. Yeah, I did my work. I did it because I loved him. You know what I'm saying? And I love you. It doesn't matter whether you love me or not. I understand the kind of mind you got. I understand what they taught you to have. I love you. And I'm going to continue to fight for you in any way that I can. That's what this is about. So all the people out there that's saying those things about Philip, about sinful, just going to have to let them go and, and release them. Just forgive them. Because remember, they are in that indoctrinated mind that is taught to hate black people. That mind is taught to hate black people. That's why it's so easy for black people to hate black people. Because they've accepted the way they think right now. This is normal. Well, if it was normal, why they had to take how you thought before? Why they had to take your language and take your culture and take everything from you? It's not normal. It's normal to this culture. But this is not your original culture. Don't you want to know who you was before you came here? Don't you want to know what God thought about you before you came here? Don't you want to know your identity? Don't you? Well, you're looking at him. A man that come on the scene and conquering everything right before me. I use the same information in the game, conquer. Use the same information when they tried to give me life in prison, it didn't happen. I use the same information when they killed my brother and we changed laws and we lead this country in police accountability. Four officers in the state of Washington, Seattle, yeah, and, and King County have been charged with murder. Four officers since we passed the law. So not only did we pass the law, it's working. Where do you know four officers have been charged with murder? Nowhere. So not, uh, so not only did we change the law, the law is effective and it's working. What they gonna say? That he was just a pimp? Well, Malcolm used to be a pimp. What you gonna say about him? God choose who he wanna choose. The Lord knew the condition of his people or what his condition would be. He ain't looking at you like this culture taught you to look at you. He looking at you like his own. And if you just accept who you are, and fight that thing in you. You know, in my classes, what I say, and you're going to have to excuse me, but in my classes, I would say, give them back their shit. See what you mean? Give them back the way they think. Give them back their mind. Give them back the way you react. Give them back the way you respond. Give them back their shit. Yeah, give them back their shit. But you value them. See, I don't allow them to speak into my life as such as value. 
oh, perfect illustration. There's a lot of people that might be an actor, that might be a singer or a rapper, right? That feel if they don't get an Academy Award, right? Or a Grammy, that they haven't arrived, right? But that's that mind that they gave you. They gave you the mind to value everything that they do, everything that they say. And unless they approve you, you're not approved. Boy, they done fashioned you so beautifully. You know what I'm saying? They done fashioned you so beautifully. Oh, poor thing. If they don't tell me, good boy, you did a good job. Let me give you this little award. You don't feel satisfied or fulfilled. Poor little thing. That's that indoctrinated mind you got. That's that mind that taught you to value them and to hate you, right? That everything they do is big and we're going to follow after them. If I don't do it like white people, if I don't uh, uh, do everything like them, if, if I don't get accepted by them, if, if, yeah, that's that indoctrinated mind. Chocolate King TV, thank you, family. Love you for that 200, right? Yeah, that's that indoctrinated mind, right? And it plays out, right? And guess what? All them actors and all them singers and all them rappers, that's normal, right? Some of them get mad. Man, I never got uh, uh, nominated. They get mad. I ain't going. I'm going to protest. I ain't going. <laughs> po thing. <laughs> po thing. <laughs> right? It ain't good enough for your people to say, well done. We love you over here. That ain't good enough. I need them white folks to, to give me the award. They need to say, you did good, boy. You did good, boy. Po thing. <laughs> You know, come on, man. You didn't know. I'm not blaming. You didn't know. You thought that it was normal how you think. It was normal how you feel about things. You thought it was normal. Oh, thing. It's not. Right? Maybe you need to start getting to these classes so I can teach you. Maybe you should start getting into these classes, right? That's what I do. I give classes. I want to do it. Somebody say, why you don't just come on um, here and um, for free and all this. And I always tell people, well, it costs me a great deal to get this information. You know, tears, pain, prison. I mean, it costs me a great deal. And one thing about our people that you should know, right? If you give our people something for nothing, they won't value it. Our people have been so indoctrinated. We buy the most. We spend the most. Because it makes us feel like we're somebody. It makes us feel like we're somebody, right? So somebody might say, man, you got your little jewelry on. You got your little drink. This shit don't mean nothing to me, right? I do entertainment. It means something in entertainment. It means something in entertainment, right? It, it attract the young folks and all this. But I didn't have none of this stuff on when I won police accountability. I've said this before. This don't make you big. It makes you small. It reduces your value when it comes down to some political, powerful stuff. I didn't have none of this stuff when I done my greatest work. This little stuff don't mean nothing to me. It means something to you. Right? Oh, man, Dre had the pinky ring on. And uh, did you think I had any of this stuff on when I was fighting them folks? Hmm? When I was making an example that your original mind can wear their asses out? Do you think I had any of this on? No, because it don't have the value that you think. It don't have the value that you think. I know you think that, oh, because Jay-Z and, and Kanye used to have a billion and, oh, I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to be a billionaire. I know you feel like that's the most important thing. I didn't have no billion to do what I've done, and they haven't done it. Jay-Z does a lot of good stuff. I love that brother. I love all of them. Don't think, don't, I'm not, don't think I don't love them. I love them. I'm just trying to make a point. And all the money, and I know he spent a lot of money doing stuff for our people and a lot of people that are, you know, having money, right? But they didn't beat the white people. They didn't submit them. They didn't submit the system. It's hard to submit the system with an indoctrinated mind that they taught you to have. You got to have a whole completely different mind, right? Because that indoctrinated mind teaches you to go one, two, three. But your original mind might go three, two, one. Right. So they they are so adapt to what they're about and what they teach that they've mastered it. So they see you coming before you even come. Right. So they got plans. So say they they so, so just say 
say the the uh, 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 say the culture is like this, a circle, right? Just say it's a circle, a circle, right? American culture is a circle, right? So what does white people do, right? They have observed, they've studied, they got Ivy Leagues, they got all that, right? So see this circle here? So they say, you know what? We are going to plan for outside of the circle. We're going to plan for up here, from way up here outside of that circle. We're going to plan and we're going to say that most people will never even get out of this circle of indoctrination. But we're going to plan just in case by miracle they get out. So we're going to plan way up here. Right. We're going to plan way up here. How do you think they beat uh, the nation and had so many informants in the nation? You know, Cointel and Pro. How do you think they submitted the Black Panthers? Because they had prepared way up here. Right. So how you going to beat them? You could be the greatest one amongst their culture as far as you can get as a black person. Right. But how you going to beat them? They preparing for up here. Right. Well, how you beat them is that you change the playing field. As long as you plan within their playing field, they could beat you. Right. With their mind, with the way they think, with the way they operate, all that. Their playing field. But if you change the playing field, there's no defense nor offense against how you operate. Right. Like when I was sitting and having a meeting and I was in the meeting with some of the most powerful police unions and the presidents and stuff. Right. And and uh, they was like, um, Andre, you're a mystery to us. You know, I wanted to say, yeah, I know I am because you ain't never seen the black man for real. You've seen him for the first time. And you're baffled because you don't understand how I developed the kind of mind I had, the reasoning to think and to gauge and to strategize, coming from a pimp and a prostitute, having gone to federal prison, being born from my mama, uh, my, from, a, from a hoe. You, you don't understand how to develop the mind because he didn't go to the educational uh, 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 schools. He didn't go to Ivy Leagues. He didn't go to Harvard and Yale. He didn't do any of that. So how did he develop this mind? He said, you're a mystery to us. They said it right in the middle in, in the meeting. Dove was there. You know what I'm saying? You're a mystery. See, they, they, uh, let me just say about Obama, right? Who I love. No shade on Obama. But I'm gonna make an, I'm, I'm trying to make, make you understand because we're talking about clarity. See, Obama, he went to Columbia. He went to Harvard, right? He became president. That's their boy. I'm talking about how they feel. We educated him. He came through our institutions. We own the knowledge. We are the powerful. That's our boy. He, we educated him. Right. Yeah. But I'm not your boy. I'm God's man. Right. So they trying to wonder he didn't go to our educational systems. Right. Because we think people we teach people how to think. He didn't go to none of our schools. How in the hell did he develop this mind? Well, the scripture says that God will take the low things of the earth to confound the high, the weak things to confound the strong. Right. That's what the most high said. And he's saying that to us. He ain't saying it to them. He's saying it to us. Right. But I was open to that. So he said that the wisdom of man is foolishness unto the most high. I was like, whoa. I remember mean, when I was younger, 16, I was reading. I was like, man, the wisdom of man is foolishness unto the most high. Well, I want that wisdom, most high. That's what I want. What do I got to do to get that? Right. And therein goes my process. The salting process, but you got to come to class, right? Got to come to class to get it, man. Yeah, got to come to class, you know. So I'm about to get off, man. But I just wanted to be in because I got a uh, I got a class tonight. I'm so uh, on my YouTube, man. Oh, you see the sign I got up here? This thing that says "Many have access, support sinful." Here's freezes cash app. You know, no one is closer. He'll support the family. You know, because a lot of people have asked, they want to support. Philip and all that. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about what's going on. Right. Um, somebody asked me, you know, how we got an autopsy. We, the family and I, well, mostly the family and uh, freeze. And we talked and we did not want him to have an autopsy in a foreign country because we don't know. We can't gauge anything. We don't want no issues or somebody, you know, still in his organs. We don't want none of those issues. Right. But the problem is, is that because he is in a foreign country, there's so many hoops that they're trying to have us go through, right? 
And I thought I think a lot of it is about money. I think that, you know, as long as they keep the body, they can store up, um, you know, that we had them this long. We did this and we did this and all that. All that costs money. I have a friend of mine, Scooter G, you know, that lives out there. And I called him and said, man, you got to help us, man. And he did. And he found out some information. And he was saying that um, one of his friends that he spoke with that was an officer had said that if you move the body from one place, like he asked if he died in the hospital, he said, no, he died at home. Well, if you move the body from home to the, to the hospital, from home to the coroner's, he said that's $7,000. And wherever they move the body is $7,000. I said, man, you got to be out of your damn mind. There's some highway robbery going on. Yes, that the police officer told him. And that's what he told us. Wherever you move the body is $7,000. We thought up, we thought we was talking about having a body, um, you know, um, put on a plane and brought over. They said that's $25,000, right? So it was just a whole bunch, man, that we work on. And I'm just so distraught because he got to be there by himself. They probably put him in a freezer. It's just, you know, you know, I heard people say crazy things. You know, he had... HIV, people who don't even know him. How would you know? You know, we talked to the coroner. We know what the situation is. A man died at home. You know what I'm saying? He was having some breathing problems. You know, he was having breathing problems. He called 911. We don't know what it is. You know, uh, we don't know if he contacted COVID and because they say COVID have done that before. Or what, you know, I know that when I had dialysis, you know, they were always cognitive of the fact that you could get fluids in your lungs. You can get fluids around your heart and it could cause you, you know, that, uh, uh, you know, to be uh, hard to breathe. You know, it could have been an issue like that, some type of, you know, uh, issue that he was having. Uh, thanks for that 500, Joe. You always come through smashing the door down. We love you for it, man. You my dude. Yeah, you might do because you believe in the information and you show your support. And I love you for it. Thank you. Yeah, man. Uh, so we don't know, but I'm telling you, he died at home, man. And I, I'm at the lie. What, what I got to lie for? You know what I'm saying? For what? You know, the man died at home. He called the police. He called 911, I mean. And he was alive when they got there. And they couldn't, they couldn't stop it. So whatever was going on, it, it was passed apart, but at least he was alive, you see, to be able to call. That's the information. I want to let you guys know whatever anybody else is saying, man, it's just, it's just unfortunate, man. It's just that self-hate from an indoctrinated mind. You know, that's what that is. But I wanted you to know what happened, you know, and we're trying to get more information, but I'm saying we're dealing with these corners. We're dealing with this country. It is the worst thing that I've ever experienced when it, when it comes down to someone passing away. And after we, I can't even grieve. He can't grieve. Uh, 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 the family can't grieve. Freeze can't grieve because we got to handle this damn business. And boy, it is, it is difficult. You know, it's difficult because they want you to go through all these hoops. So now we had to go get his fingerprints, send his, uh, send his fingerprints, like the, the the ID he had wasn't sufficient. We got to send his fingerprints. We had to call Vegas to get his finger. It's just a lot of shit, man. But we're trying to handle it, man. Right. So you guys got the information when you hear all that shit out there, man. It's just it's, it's unfortunate, man, that we are the ones that are so hateful like that to each other, man. But I'm only here for the remnant anyway. I'm not here for all of them. I'm not here for all of us. Because the Most High said only a remnant will be saved. Some of us just ain't going to never get it. Some of us going to have that self-hate forever. Right? Until they transition up out of here. Right? I'm not here for them. I'm here for the remnant. Yeah, I love you guys, man. And uh, I just wanted to come and holler at you guys. Thank you guys for all your support. I love you. Um, let me see, man, if I can put in here so you guys know how to get to my class. It's on my YouTube, man. It's on YouTube. All you got to do is it's right next to to the subscribe. There's, it says join. And if you just join, you can join the class. I'm going to start giving classes twice a week on YouTube, which will be Monday. So starting this Monday uh, and Friday, every week, twice a week, Monday and Friday. And there's a lot that I didn't get into about how you get rid of the socialized mind. That's for the class. Right. I wanted to give you a little bit. Come into the class, man. You know. And I have a class on um, on IG. I do that class uh, on Wednesdays, right? So it'll be classes on YouTube Monday and Friday every single week at 7 p.m. West Coast time, Pacific Standard Time. On IG, 
It is Wednesday at 7 p.m. West Coast time, which is Pacific Standard Time on Wednesdays, right? You got to subscribe over there on IG, right? I love you guys, man. Uh, I want to thank you for your support. Uh, thank you, Jay, Jay Mod. Oh, Jay, what is it? Oh, Jay Mon. Thank you, family, for that 20. We love you, man. Uh, so at any rate, man, I'm looking forward to seeing you come be a part of this class. Let me teach you. Let me give you this information, you know, uh, because ain't nobody got the receipts like your boy Dre. What I say works. What I say works. Come from the most high. All right. With all my heart. I love you. I mean it. One.